Hello and welcome to this recap of today's CodeBuddies.org live coding session. CodeBuddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. In today's session, we're working on the Western Friend website. There were two main tasks uh, we were able to complete. One was allowing a user to define and arrange uh, navigation menu items. They can actually create a navigation menu by selecting pages and changing the ordering of those uh, items, even including um, external URLs. We did this by enabling the Wagtail Menus plugin. It's open source. It's under relatively recent and active development, um, and it's very robust. Um, maybe like a little bit of overkill, but I think, um, well, it's hard to tell how much time and effort I would have had to put into writing my own uh, drag and drop sort of menu plugin and versus how much uh, benefit we'll get from this one. We'll see in the, uh, in the long run. But in any case, let's take a look at the code uh, for that in a moment. I'll demo them and then I'll look at the code, sorry. But the other issue we wanted to work on was the contact form. We have a contact us form that we want to get feedback from people. Hopefully not a lot of spam submissions. I uh, didn't do anything to avoid spam in this current uh, implementation aside from um, well, it's not avoiding spam, but it's not going to send out any emails. Um, our Drupal.org site uh, emails us every time we get a contact form submission, and a lot of those submissions are spam, so we're just getting a bunch of junk email. It's not really actionable. So let's take a look at the Wagtail dashboard. These are mainly uh, back-end features, but the contact form is visible to end users. So for the navigation menu, again, we just enabled this Wagtail menus plugin. Uh, you know, I think overall this is pretty simple to install and work with. I just had some struggles. Uh, you know, you got to read the documentation pretty carefully, but also uh, I think there were a couple of gotchas I might have encountered. Uh, had to do some manually figuring it out and stuff. But um, when you enable the plugin, it creates two entries in the settings page. A main menu setting, which is your main site navigation, that's what we're after, and a flat menus, which allows you to define arbitrary um, other menus, like a footer menu, for example, or sidebar menu. We only use the main menu one. When you click the main menu, it's worth noting that one of the things that um, was confusing to me at first, uh, well, it's not just displaying here, and I guess uh, I only have one site. Wagtail is a multi-site um, project out of the box, so if you only have one site, it's uh, maybe not so relevant, but when you have multiple sites, you can actually define a main menu for each site, and it'll generate a um, menu based on your page hierarchy. So um, you pick your site, uh, picks a home page. So when we look at the default site, our home page is this welcome page. When I view the welcome content, uh, there are several pages underneath welcome contact, magazine, bookstore, community, events, and library, and, and the subscribe page. We'll take a look at uh, how this uh, is written the code is written in a moment uh, then you just go back to your main menu and you essentially select uh, the pages or a custom URL um, and if you want a new query string or hash uh, or you want to customize the text if the welcome if you want to override that uh, I didn't really touch based on any of those the, the I guess the main confusing part that uh, I'll point out very carefully is you have to edit even each of the pages, even though I've, like literally I've just added a, a page to a menu, I then have to go to each page and let's just say, oh, contact form, which I just added. You have to check the box under, sorry, under promote, show in menus, otherwise it won't render. And I was actually getting some other weird errors that I can't even describe. I digress. You just have to make sure to check this box. And I think the docs do mention that. Otherwise, it won't show up even though you've just added it. And I think if one of the errors is I hadn't checked that box for any page, and so the menu wasn't even rendering, uh, which was kind of confusing and frustrating. All right, cool. But let's go ahead and look at that one more time. When I look at this, um, oh, sorry, the contact form. Uh, I'll come back to the contact form. You know, I really think that's about it. Actually, you can just change the order of the menu items uh, as well. It's a little bit of like a long and verbose uh, form when you have multiple items and none of these fields are relevant. But okay, in any case. Uh, so let's say if I put, uh, I 
actually I shouldn't be putting subscribe in there. Uh, I'll show you why in a moment, just to avoid confusion. Let's see if I put uh, the uh, community before the bookstore, for example. So community is here, then bookstore, and I save this link. Now I go to the front end, open up the menu. Your magazine, community, bookstore, events, library, and contact. Oh, so for some reason, the subscribe. Oh, the subscribe's not showing up because I'm logged in as a subscriber. I've already subscribed. So that was a feature I, I worked on in the last one. So let's get back, log back in. My dummy password. Go back to the Wagtail admin. I mean, overall, I, this, despite some minor struggles in learning, uh, I still maintain that Wagtail has been probably the best developer experience uh, of any web development framework or even point and click uh, things like Drupal. It's, it's really good. It's a joy to work with. Let's, um, yeah, let's take a look at the forms now. <clears throat> then we'll look at the code. So we define a contact form, <clears throat> and it's essentially a, um, a wagtail page with some custom form elements. I should be able to now edit this, which I don't even know how to edit it apparently. Well, <clears throat> what's cool here is we're seeing a couple of test submissions I did, and yet it comes with the filtering, and uh, you can download it for, to CSV out of the box. I didn't have to wire any of that up. Uh, I believe I, if I want to edit the form page, I come over here and I have defined an instance of the contact form, which I can edit. Okay, there, that's no problem. Uh, it would be maybe convenient to have a little edit button there on that <clears throat> page, but okay, I can handle it. So you, it's a regular wagtail page. You define the page title. There's a little widget here showing the total submissions count and how and the latest submission date. We have an intro text that uh, will display above the contact form. Then a number of form fields, and it, it's pretty cool. It lets you just design a custom form with different types of fields, hidden fields, date, time, you know, multiple select radio. Um, you can define your choices and set a default, change the field ordering. This is regular wagtail stuff. Didn't have to wire up any of that UI. And then a thank you text uh, so that you, you can show some content after the form has been submitted. So let's go to the front. And then just take a look at this, how this renders when I go to the contact page. So you can see I have this intro text. Oops, I type in COBOL here. Anyway, I submit the form and it shows the uh, thank you text. Okay, let's go ahead and take, it's pretty standard workflow, but let's take a quick look at the code. Uh, today I'm uh, actually gonna just show the code on GitHub. It's a little easier, I think. I'm gonna try it out this way. So that it really just highlights the changes I made and I can just walk through those. So I have a pull request here that's been merged. I've tried this previously. I tried doing a custom job and uh, didn't like the result. Uh, so some of these changes I'll just skim over, but we, I've switched to poetry, I've switched to project to poetry, so we're now our metadata is um, looking a little different for package management. Um, here's the subscription, the migration, excuse me. So the first thing to do is the config, you're going to add the wagtail menus to your base settings and a little bit of a context preprocessor in your templates so that uh, when you're rendering out a template, it can actually get the metadata from the Wagtail menu. Uh, so here I've created a template just to display um, the menu items. And uh, these menu tags come from the Wagtail menus package. And then for item and tag, you just do some you know, HTML templating. Uh, by default, it used the same class as Bootstrap, you know, active to highlight the uh, um, page that you're on, which is pretty cool. And apparently it's smart enough to see the current route. And then I just added the Bootstrap class nav item so it would render properly in the uh, template. Um, and nav link, I had to add that nav link class. So. There we go, it's a little hard to preview this code on GitHub, and maybe I won't do this next time, but uh, uh, then I just had to update our nav bar HTML, uh, loading the menu tags again. This might not be necessary on this page. Uh, yeah, I believe it is actually. Uh, then some linting occurred. I installed the auto pepe, so some of these changes are just lint related. Uh, and all you do is just add the basic 
main menu tag. There are some more configuration parameters you can put in there. I'm wondering if, if I uh, didn't view this side by side, it might be a little easier to, to describe. Um, so this is lint, these are lint and changes. I mean, that's really it. So this, this menu item just looks for a, a menu in a conventional place, templates, menus, main menu, .html. And you can probably override that through con, uh, config variable, but uh, I just stuck close with the config, so it meant I, I wrote less code. Um, pretty cool. So not a lot of changes, mostly <laughs> more changes in the metadata and the linting than there was actual lines of code that changed for the feature. Very cool. All right, we're going to go ahead and uh, review this pull request for the contact form in the same manner on GitHub. And maybe I will stick with this approach. I don't know. It does make it easy to highlight the changes again. So what if I show them instead of side by side? Well, in any case, let's go ahead and go through it. So for this uh, contact form, we created it. We started a new app called Forms, and then a migration, which we don't need to read the migration because it's auto-generated. But here's our form model. Essentially, you need two things, and I got a lot of white space there. But okay. Uh, anyway, you need to, for those arbitrary form fields. You just need um, a class that inherits from abstract form field that links that form field to a particular page. And when that page is deleted, it, it'll cascadingly delete these form fields. That gives you the sort of drag and drop, not drag and drop, but you know, point and click form design approach. Pretty cool. Then you design, you define a page that will render the form. This probably, contact form page should really only have one class. There, maybe I'll set a, a value to only have one instance of this. But in any case, um, this model is used for both this playing or rendering the form and the submission message, the you know thank you message or whatever. So anything that you want to display in the template and I'll, I'll let the end user change the user interface, the editor, the content editor, uh, you will define as fields uh, on this. And I think underneath it's at the end of the inheritance, it's probably a wagtail page, but I'm not exactly sure. I didn't, I didn't look underneath the covers, so to speak. Then you just define the content panels you want to edit, display on the edit form. This form submissions panel is what displayed the count. Let's see if I edit this page. This is the form submissions panel. So it shows the total submissions. So we get that for free just by one line of code in an import. Then you want to display the intro text and Thank you text probably in some order. Um, you know, maybe I should have put the, the thank you text below the intro just for convenience when editing the form, so you don't have to scroll down too far to get to the thank you text. Uh, and then this form fields pulls in from this relationship we defined here, uh, this parental key relationship, and then just lets you define uh, arbitrary number of orderable fields. It's worth mentioning that this parental key comes from the model cluster, so it lets you do the many-to-many, -many, uh, I think it's a many-to-many -many relationship that you can define with these. And more importantly, that you can order them. Uh, so let's just take a quick look. The contact form is just, um, maybe if I click here, I can, yeah, anyway. You know, we're going to extend our base HTML so it'll show the whole um, master template in there and inherit, you know, bringing all of our CSS and stuff like that, our bootstrap uh, styles. We need to wagtail core tags so that we could render rich text content and crispy forms tags so that we could make our form a little more crispy, meaning adding um, bootstrap classes and helpers. It writes the HTML for us, basically. So inside of the page title, block, which is in the header, we're just going to, uh, sorry, yeah, we're going to render the page title. And inside of the content block, we're going to also render the page title, so that's consistent. And that it means it comes up here at the top of the browser window, which is actually not showing in this recording, and also here. And then we enter that, that we render that intro field 
through a rich text. So it shows here contact intro text, and I can actually edit this and then maybe add some publish that. Even has a preview, that's pretty cool. We'll refresh that view live. So now you can see it's rich text. That means it's rendering a safe subset of HTML. Um, that's about it in the CR, uh, CSR token just to prevent sites, cross site requests, you know, hit, submitting this form. Uh, then you want to show a landing page. It's the same style of code, uh, showing the page title and the thank you text through the rich text. Editor. That's about it. Um, no tests. I haven't been writing, really writing those. Um, the other thing is we wanted to be able to add those. Uh, some you have to add the contact form page somewhere in the page hierarchy and somewhere in the wagtail page hierarchy. We want it right underneath the um, home page, which is our welcome page. There's a contact form. It's a natural way it displays, and if you notice, uh, it also means makes the URL at the root level of the site. If you nest these um, pages, then that you'll have a nested uh, slug or URL slug. So maybe that's the way you, how you would like it. So this allows us to, on the home model, add a child page and it's kind of collapsing it, but sub page types, uh, contact form page. And likewise, we just had to, in, in our settings, we had to enable this forms. Um, app so that the, you know, Django can discover it and run migrations or generate migrations and all that good stuff. But again, not very many lines of code, more head scratching than, than actual, you know, typing out the commands or copy and pasting and fixing copy and pasting errors. Okay, well, that's about it. I think this project, we're hoping to get it wrapped up in uh, at least the next couple of months. We're really close. There's only a few uh, kind of, they're significant in their importance, but I don't think in terms of the amount of code. So there are a few features left, and we did just need to go over all of the uh, site holistically and uh, look for any missing, any things we just forgot to add to the to-do list, or maybe some polish or, you know, alignment issues. Who knows? So, I think the remainder of this uh, live coding series is going to be handling these last few features, uh, particularly the um, memorials, the memorial minutes, uh, which is a directory. Uh, for people who have, uh, are members of the community who have passed. Mm -hmm. um, but that's uh, about the extent of today's exercise. I do want to mention that we had an interesting di um, sort of diversion into COBOL language uh, during the live stream. And, uh, uh, you know, that was quite challenging. I was way out of my comfort zone. Uh, we were, I was not able to help, basically. Um, I felt a lot, of, you know, a lot of frustration there. Um, but yeah, the sort of the main takeaway, I guess, was that, hmm, I don't know, that we should really, um, it's kind of a hard one, but yeah, the, the importance of keeping these legacy languages around and building on the past uh, is, you know, uh, worth mentioning. Um, another thing I learned is, or was kind of occurring to me is that as a pedagogical tool, uh, when you're teaching someone to code at a, you know, entry level, uh, first uh, exposure to programming, uh, we should really be teaching people conventional languages. Um, so my, my comments during the live stream were not so much anything against COBOL as a language or the designers and, and the legacy there, but mainly that as a newcomer put, and as a teacher, um, put people in uh, a broad, uh, language and, and developer pool. Uh, and those, there's some really clear um, languages that we should be starting teaching people and learning ourselves, I suppose, you know, JavaScript, Python, you know, Java has been a, uh, one that's been up there. Mainly this whole C family, uh, almost every major um, program that's used actively in industry, Ruby, Python, Java, Dart, Go, uh, JavaScript, um, C++, C Sharp, um, almost everyone I can think of has very similar aesthetic uh, and they're all in the same family, I guess the C family. And um, 
just looking at COBOL was mind boggling. And I can imagine, you know, looking at JavaScript for, for the first time or even looking at React code as just a JavaScript developer. Uh, I can feel that, that mind bogglingness about it. So I really value communities and developer communities that have this ethos of simplicity and clarity, uh, like Vue.js or Python, um, who put, you know, and I think COBOL and languages like that had basically pushed a paradigm of human readability uh, forward that was maybe lacking uh, at the time, so it was very progressive. I could uh, even sense just from reading a little bit of COBOL today, um, it was expressed in really plain language, but some of the idiosyncrasies were just, you know, you can't guess it. So, I don't know, just all that to say, it was very challenging and I, you know, I felt a little bit of sense of failure as not being able to help um, with this programming assignment. Um, but I'm also grateful for the amount of effort that's gone into these sort of more contemporary languages to make them very user-friendly user, user friendly. and the, the breadth of the communities there who are also available to help, including CodeBuddies.org. So again, this has been a recap for today's live coding session on CodeBuddies.org. Uh, I did look uh, on CodeBuddies. We don't have a COBOL learning group, which is unfortunate, so I'm not really sure uh, that even where to ask questions about COBOL. Um, but there are a lot of other study groups and people wanting to learn and help one another. So I hope to see you around CodeBuddies.org. And thanks again to everybody who's been hanging out in the Twitch streams. It's always, always nice to have uh, people join those sessions, even when we get off and... Uh, uh, you know, off track for a while in different uh, explorations. All right, well, thanks again for watching and have a great day.